Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to yet another episode of creating a 2D side scroller in Unreal Engine 4. My name is Wayne and I've been taking you for all these amazing videos in regards to creating a 2D side scroller in Unreal. Today what we're going to be looking at is making a, an amazing turret. Uh, so basically the turret's going to be able to track where the actor is and will rotate at the angle that the, the, the actor is currently at its state. And basically the turret will then be able to automatically shoot if the character becomes in range. Now we have done this already. Uh, we're doing our in range of our bad guy. So follow the same principle, but we didn't do any rotation with that. Um, so we're actually going to look at that. We're going to rotate on a different axis so we can actually see it working quite nicely. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So where we left off is we got to a point where we can now, the game saves. So if you had to quit, you can obviously resume your game and go back to where your last position was. So we got that far. Now what's going to happen is these are just going to be extra stuff um, that people ask for now. And I'll just start throwing that in, uh, obviously, into our tutorial series until I, it kind of gets exhausted and there's just nothing else we can cover in regards to a 2D side scroller. So what we need to do is we need to make a blueprint in this episode. So we're going to make a blueprint. It's going to be a class. We're going to call it an actor. In this case, we're going to call it BP underscore turret. Okay, so this is going to be a turret. So I'm going to double click on it. I have no idea why it opens up on the other screen. Okay, we're going to add a paper sprite. So if we add our sprite, now I've already made one. I mean, you guys can make one if you want. Uh, mine's just a very basic, it's just a cannon. So it looks like that. It's nothing too special. <laughs> it's just a, yeah, it's, it's nothing at all. And we're just going to add an arrow. So actually, we want to rotate this. So we might want to rotate this round first. So let's make sure it's flat. So let's just rotate it like that. So it's flat. We then want to add an arrow. So we want to put an arrow into the scene next. And we want to make sure that arrow is pointing at the front. Okay, so at the front. And we can then just stick that into our default scene. I don't know why that does that. Kind of crazy. We'll just leave it as it is for now. Okay, so we've got um, our spray and our arrow. And basically, what's going to happen is we're going to get this to rotate at, at the angle that we want. So basically, this is just a cannon front piece. And this is what rotate. We'll stick another sprite over the top of it just to make sure it looks a little bit better. But you can't really do that in this component because what's going to happen is if we put it as a default, the whole thing will rotate, even the base. So we don't want the base to rotate. We just want this cannon piece to rotate. So let's compile and save that. And let's go into our event graph. And what we need to set up first is we need to set it up to shoot. So just like we did with the bad man, we had a custom event. So a custom event. And we're just going to call this turret shoot like that. And we're just going to set it up exactly the same way we did the bad man. So let's just throw a do once. So we have a do once there. Uh, once it does something, we need to then spawn our actor. So we're going to spawn actor of a class, if I can spell correctly. And we want to spawn our BP. Now we've already got a shot, so we're just going to refer to the bad guy's bullet. You can make your own if you want. Let's, by all means, do that. We're going to grab the arrow off as a reference because we want to shoot in the direction of the arrow. So we're going to get the wall transform. I've already covered this in all my other sessions, so that's why I'm going quite quick in this one, um, just because we've already set this up. So I'm just going to do this very quickly. I'm going to throw a delay into there. And we can change the delay to maybe 0.5 of a second. And then when it's completed, we can then rotate back around and reset that do once. And that's pretty much setting up a shooting system. Um, so we can get them to shoot. So let's comment that and we'll call this Tari shooting. Oh, shooting. Uh, shooting. Okay, so now that's set up, what we need to do is we need to find out where the actor's location and where the actual um, component is itself. So let's get our event tick because that's what we used last time. Get a sequence node. We'll plug that in. So plug our event tick into our sequence. And the very first thing we want to work out is the distance between the character and also our turret itself. So we need to create a variable. We're just going to call this dis, just like we did with the actor. So we're going to call it distance. It's going to be a float because we want to work out exactly where he is. We'll compile, we'll probably come with an error. Yeah, so there's the error. It's because we haven't connected it to anything. So that's why. So we want to set the distance as our first value. So I'm going to plug that in. Now remember to get our distance, we had to work out where our character was and also where this blueprint was itself. So the very first thing is we're going to get the actor. So we're going to get player character. So we can do exactly the same things that we did um, over and over again. So we're going to get his location. Let's drag off here and so get actor. So 
at the location. Remember, we split the structure, so we're going to split that up just because we want those values. And you don't have to, but I just like splitting it up. It's a little bit easier for me. The next thing we're going to work out is where this paper sprite is. We're going to grab that, drag off this node. We're going to get the world location of that. So world location, just like that. We're going to split that struct up. And basically, we just want to do some maths now. So we're going to say this minus this would then give us our distance. Okay, so it'll give us our value of our distance. Now, what we want to do now is we just want to work out if we're in range. Okay, so if we're in range of this, we're going to drag off here. We're just going to do um, in range. So um, in range float, so that would be. And basically, we want to work out is it, uh, say, minus 100 to a maximum value of 100. So that's basically going to say if we're in that range, then we need to branch and do something. Okay. And if we are in that range, just get the turret to shoot. And we made that, remember, that function. So if we're in that range, start shooting. So we compile and save. And let's see what happens. So let's drag that turret in now. So let's pop him in. There he is with the massive ball in the front. That's fine for now. So let's see what happens. So save and play. So we can see if I'm in range, you'll start shooting in that direction. You'll do damage, obviously. Um, so there we go. You can see that you start shooting. If I stand in negative value, sorry, this is positive. So if I'm positive, that's working fine. If I'm in negative value, you can see you'll stop shooting. And if I get close, you'll start shooting again. But that's not what we want. We actually want this to start rotating in the angle that we want it to rotate. So to do that, let's go back into our blueprint. And all we need to do is do that rotation thing again. Okay, so let's just drag off here. And we're going to say set actor rotation. Right, so we're going to set the actor's rotation. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate on pretty much every single one of these values. Okay, So we're going to, we're going to rotate on all that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to grab, at first, we need to get the actor location. So get the actor location. Oops, I can't spell today. Get the actor location as normal. But remember, we used something quite nice, which was find and look at rotation. So find and look at rotation. And we want to find where the player character is. So we're going to get the player character and get him. We're going to get his location. So we're going to get the actor location. And we're going to plug that into the target. So basically, we're, it'll just keep looking at where the actor location is. And if that's correct, we'll just throw in the new rotation. So let's see what happens now. So we'll just compile, save, and play. Now what should happen is that this should follow me. As you can see, it does. It's a very big turret at the moment. But you can see that it does follow me. If I decide to move it, so let's actually just move it down here. Um, just so it's not in the way. So we just put it down here. Um, let's play. So you can see now it does follow me in the direction that I start running in. And that's pretty much it, really how we actually get it to work. Now, to control its fire rate, that's all just in that delay function that we've got. So if you remember, we had a delay up here on our shooting. So if we had to change that, to example, to 0 0.1, uh, this probably might go a bit ballistic and crash my machine. Hopefully not. Um, but you can see, you'll just start, there you go. So you can see they always do a quick burst of bullets. Now, you can obviously set up with a little bit of math so how you want to configure that to work. So, for example, if you don't want to just run past it like that, so you can see there's a bit of a delay between myself and the rotating turret, you could actually um, set it up to fire if it's in this section. You could put a little bit of math in here to just give it a bit of a, a head start so um, it doesn't just trigger um, in this, this value here. So you could actually you can manipulate it a little bit to how you want it to work to get that to rotate. Now, if you want to make it look pretty, uh, what we could do is, because we can't place a sprite onto this blueprint, what we could do is we could just cover it with something. So I don't know if I, let's cover it with a pumpkin. There we go. Um, let's scale it up a bit more. So let's just scale the pumpkin a bit. So this is the way, this is the only problem that I've found with this is that you have to scale it this way. So let's save and play. So you can see now uh, that wasn't really set in the right location, to be honest. Uh, we actually need to set that so it's down at the bottom. 
so down here. Somewhere around there. Um, that's still slightly out, but you you get the gist of that. You'll have to configure it so that um it will shoot in the in the exact location that you want it to shoot. Because if I try to attach a sprite, I'll show you what happens if you try. Oh my goodness gracious me, Wayne! Um, is if we try to attach a sprite to the blueprint, so to the turret. I'll show you what happens. So a sprite to this. Um, remember, we use the pumpkin. So let's stick that pumpkin in wherever he is. Pumpkin, where are you? Pumpkin, there he is. So there's the pumpkin. Because that's part of the default scene. Um, and I haven't quite worked out how to separate the, the default scene around. Um, if anyone knows that, please let me know because I'm finding it a little bit difficult to separate them. But if you, if it is the case, if you play now, you'll notice that the pumpkin rotates with the actual turret itself. So I find the best option is to just um, put the, the overlap onto your turret separate. Obviously, this is way too big. This is absolutely massive. We don't, you know, you never have a turret this big. But it's just to show for reference sake that we can get that to rotate and shoot at the current location of where the character is. Thank you very much for joining me for this session. Uh, it's been quite fun taking you for all these episodes and all your feedback and stuff. There have been some amazing people that have been donating to my channel. Thank you very much. Your names are now down in the description. Um, and that's for anyone else that donates to my channel. Um, I'll support you guys as much as you support me. I'll stick your names down in my credentials at the bottom. Um, so yeah, if you do want to donate, just below, grab that. Other than that, Share, like, subscribe, and drop this wherever you like. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.